I'm Dr. Russell Jackson. I came to Case as a graduate student in the summer of 2009. This is my associate, Darlene Schaub, who's a graduate student currently. We are in the Mercis lab, where we work on automating subtasks performed during laparoscopic suture. And we're specifically trying to automate the subtasks as performed by surgical assistants, such as the Da Vinci robot you see here. So we've been trying to get a robot like this for a while because it's a very good development platform in order to test and refine our algorithms. Unfortunately, a machine like this costs about $2 million new. We found out recently that they sometimes are for sale on eBay, so we were able to get one from eBay, and after it arrived, everything worked great, we have all the accessories and all the tools we can need for it. Alright, so in order to use the DaVinci, you have to first insert tools such as this gripper or that gripper into the robot ports. These ports are what go into the patient and are actually used part of the procedure and they provide part of the sterile barrier that the patient has under laparoscopic surgery. So if you can go ahead really you can install this. Calibrates the rope gripper first. That sound means that the gripper is ready to be used as part of the procedure. I'm going to go ahead and insert mine now. So once the two grippers are inserted, you then have to move them into position. So, go ahead and rotate. And then everything is about trying to put it in the correct position so that it is usable in the optimal spots for the surgery. So, at this point then, the surgery would start. Unfortunately, we haven't completed development of any autonomous suturing, so instead we will demonstrate sort of the types of controls that are used by surgeons when they practice using a machine like Alright, so this is what you see here is a practice pad for surgeons who are training to perform suturing or other laparoscopic procedures. So what the goal is, is to take this key-like metal structure and actually feed it through the crap in the metal. So right now my associate is trying to do perform the feeding. And as you can see, it can be very challenging to perform. But with practice, surgeons are able to do it really well. What we hope to do is we hope to eliminate the practice that surgeons need they can really focus on the pathologies as well as the actual treatment of the disease instead of trying to learn a new tool. A big challenge that we are facing is the fact that computer vision is still a developing science and inside the body when we're performing laparoscopic surgery, it's very difficult to discern different objects from each other, so it's a big challenge in computer vision science. So one of the big implications that we hope to change is that currently when you use a surgical assistant such as this robot, it makes a procedure take longer. So what we hope is that by automated subtasks performed during the procedure, it will in fact reduce the overall procedure time and save time and obviously the risk of complications due to the shortening time.